Hello, my friends. Jacob is here one more time, and thank you all for pressing play, for spending some time with me, and for joining me. It's kind of a sad day. All that's happening right now in Turkey and Syria, it's, uh, it's terrible. We, one of the largest earthquakes they've ever had um, has struck, and it is leaving over 5,000 people have already passed away. People are buried under the rubble. It's, it's a terrible, terrible thing. And it's not one of those things where you want to come on here and you want to say, oh, well, you know, I feel like the Lord has been warning us that things like this were going to happen, because things like this always happen. But God has been speaking. God's been speaking so very clear. And, and in this terrible disaster, there's a message that needs to be heard so that we can encourage people and we can understand that there is more that God has planned for us. I've been a little distracted recently with social media and with things that are going on there. A lot of strange things happening, like th the other night, out of the blue, Starlink passed directly over my house. I've never seen that before. Very interesting. Noah called me out. He was like, Dad, you got to see this. And it was like one after the other, after the, like literally right over our house. Never seen it before. It was quite a sight to behold. And I could understand why a lot of people would think there's some kind of invasion. But you think about it. You think about the invasiveness of everything that's going on. And it's easy for us to get trapped in, um, in, our, in our pursuit for likes and clicks and whatever. To forget that really all of that nonsense is going to go away. That the only thing that matters right now is your relationship with God and other people. To love, to forgive, to be kind. So, been hung up in all this and then I hear about this terrible earthquake that hits. Now the reason why this was so strange to me was because not one month ago, on January 2nd, I did an entire video called Earthquake Warning. This one right here where I was warning about a 7.0 earthquake or higher that was going to go down. Now, why was I talking about this? Well, because at the beginning of the year, I did a video, this one right here, about 2023, and I said that the beginning of the year would probably start off with some crazy stuff. And why? Because we had a comet, a green comet, that hadn't been here since the Neanderthals passing. I talked about the magnetosphere had been cracked because we have all these incredible solar flares that have been going on, one after the other after the other. We had an incredible conjunction of, of incredible planets lining up on one side of our universe, which creates some kind of an imbalance. And I told everybody, earthquakes usually follow. In the video that I did where I was warning about the earthquake, I said it very clearly. Take a look. Spiritually speaking, I think that there is. And I feel like this year is going to be just so revealing. And I feel like something big is going to happen in the beginning stages of, of, of this month or next month. Could be this. You know, we got the, the Christmas comment that I just um, I tweeted out about and I talked about in my last show. Spooky stuff. We've had mysterious solar shock waves. One of them, this CME, there's uh, over here to the right side of the page over the left side of the page over there. If you look at it, this just cracked the magnetosphere. And that's a big deal because, and it was like December 19th, December 20th, all this stuff's going down. Same time that we have these big earthquakes. At the same time, we have something that could also knock out communications, knock out power, all of these things. <laughs> it's a, uh, it's a lot to be concerned about, but nothing that you know, we should be, ex we should be excited about these things because it kind of does take some kind of a shakeup to basically get us out of the fog that we've been in and to focus on the things that really matter, the things that are true, the things that are going to make a difference in the world. Now, I didn't want to talk about it. Like when I saw the earthquake, I, that was the first thing that came to mind was this video that I did. Because in the video, I was talking about how God was going to shake the earth. It was going to try to grab your attention one more time. Therefore, I'm going to make the heavens tremble and the earth will shake from its place at the wrath of the Lord Almighty in the day of his burning anger. But the video had to do with, you know, a warning, a signal that went off for, you know, the, the, uh, the West Coast, San Francisco. So this morning when I woke up, I said, well, Lord, maybe there's a connection to San Francisco and this earthquake. So, of course, I look it up. 
And what do I find? Well, they're comparing this earthquake to the one that I talked about in the early 1900s. In fact, they say this tremor looks similar to the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, which sparked fires and leveled much of the city. The geographic settings are, are fairly different, but the tectonic setting is quite similar. Because of the way the plates are aligned and everything else, it's almost identical. So I find that strange. What I find stranger is the fact that I was, it was really a call to action. It was really a call for people to wake up that God was going to shake us and God was going to quake us and God was going to get us to, 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 to just stop worrying about things that don't matter. It doesn't matter if I can't communicate with someone on Twitter or not. I shouldn't be focused about that. It doesn't matter if the channel is growing to the, uh, the desire that I would like to see it. It doesn't matter. When you can lose everything in an instant, it doesn't matter. All that matters is your relationship with God and with others. I was just talking to Lance about this, about how we were talking about how everything that has happened is happening again. It's written in the book of Ecclesiastes. There's, there's nothing new under the sun. And on this channel here, we've talked about everything, right? Years ago, I said, oh, the flood was coming. And then the flood came. And we had everything that happened in the world. And I've talked about the exodus of Egypt, how we were going to leave the system, how we couldn't be dis dependent on the system anymore because the system was doomed. So here we find ourselves at a moment in time where everybody's kind of concerned what's going to happen next. And then this earthquake hits. This earthquake hits, which just really resonated with me. Because as I was doing a little bit of research in this, because I knew that there was something to it, I was reminded that the area where this earthquake hit was the Hittite Empire. That's right, there was actually a picture of Gaziantep Castle that was destroyed. The castle, which was the very first castle built by the Hittite Empire. The Hittite, which by the way, were like the, uh, the, uh, the enemies of, of the Hebrews. The enemies of God's chosen people. The enemies. And they were scary, the Hittites. So when I see that this castle was l like legitimately destroyed, the very first castle of the Hittite Empire, I think to myself, well, maybe, maybe this is a sign that the corrupt system that is in control is about to be destroyed as well. And the more I dig into the story, and the more I dig into this terrible event, this tragedy, where people are still being pulled from the rubble, I'm reminded of how the Hebrews must have felt when they finally were fleeing from Egypt. Because this all happened. The Hittite Empire, when in, in, its, in its prime, in its heyday, it, it was very strong around the same exact time of the Exodus, when Moses was leading his people out. Now here's the weird thing. So you had Babylon, you had Babylon, then you had, the, you had um, Egypt, you had the Hittites, and then you had, you had God's people, these small, just small people who, who just, they were slaves. And for the first time they were on their own and they had to be dependent on God. And they end up in the wilderness until Joshua finally leads them in to Canaan to capture, get this, the Hittite empire. Because that was the land that is given to the people. It's a picture of the people that are in charge today, right? So you, there are factions, right? So you have, Egypt, right? Everywhere you see the uh, the all-seeing eye, the Illuminati, the pyramids, you have them. You have the Hittites. You have every, you know, you have Syria, you have you have Turkey, you have all of these other areas in the world. At the same time, you have Babylon, who's just about to come into power. Because what's going to end up happening is Babylon kind of sweeps in. Everything that happened back then is happening today. If you don't think that there are factions in the world and different organizations and groups that are fighting for control right now, well then you're silly. You're a silly goose. Because it is very clear that right now there is a war going on between all of these factions. Some people are even saying that this terrible earthquake, that it wasn't really a natural disaster, that it was actually some kind of a weapon. And these things I can't get into because I, I'll see people posting, it was this and it was that. And I say to myself, well, how would you know? The only thing that I know is that I was concerned 
that there would be some kind of a great earthquake. So much so that I did this, you know, this random live stream out of the blue, and I went on this whole tirade, and I actually read from Scripture about what God was going to do because people were so corrupt. Therefore, I'm going to make the heavens tremble, and the earth will shake from its place at the wrath of the Lord Almighty in the day of his burning anger. The coincidence of this location and this particular earthquake being compared to the one that I was talking about in my video for it's, it's just very strange. Stranger still, the area that they're, they're, they're digging and they're reporting on, it actually means the district of the Baker people. That's right, Dia Becker is the, uh, is the area. Uh, I probably pronounced it wrong, but I, all I could think of is the story of Joseph, where Joseph, he was a slave, and then he was falsely accused, and he was imprisoned, and, you know, the baker, and the, the wine cup, you know, the wine bearer, or the wine bibber, the one that was the cup bearer, the one that drank to make sure it was poisoned, Jesus said, he says, who are those? Those that can drink the cup, right? It's, it's a picture of all of us, but the baker, Baker was symbolic of people, you know, that were filled with pride. The leaven of the Pharisees, right? It's all about that. It's all about ego and control. Ironically, the story of the baker and, and the wine bearer was the, the baker, they think, wanted to overthrow and destroy Pharaoh. And that's why he was put to death. He had that dream. Joseph was in prison. Joseph interprets the dream. And everything that Joseph said was true came true. So what ends up happening? The most important and powerful person in the world, Joseph is brought before this person. It would be the equivalent of like maybe someone like Elon Musk watching me. And here all of a sudden, here I am, right? Talking to somebody and encouraging somebody. It would be very interesting if that was the case, especially since I've been having such an issue on Twitter lately. I'm just joking. But the point of the story is, all intents and purposes, Joseph shouldn't have been nobody, but he ends up becoming the most powerful person in the world. The, the, the Israelites, they should have been nobody, but they're still around today. The problem is they're scattered and they're lost. And the world has tried to convince you that they're a people that they're really not because the Israelites are all of you. All of you that are serving God, we've been lost and we've been scattered as the, uh, as the dust in the wind from the four corners. But God is delivering us all because this is a world event. And so when I see the castle, the very first castle of the Hittite Empire destroyed, and I remember that God told Joshua, okay, because, because in the story, if we were looking at the Old Testament, we've been in the wilderness trying to figure things out, right? Trying to navigate where we're going to get eggs. We're trying to figure all this stuff out. But then God says, after Moses dies, because Moses, his problem was he didn't really trust in God. He wanted to do it his way. It's my problem too. It's my problem too. I don't trust in God enough. I trust in my own ability. And I got to let that go. I got to stop wrestling. I got to just trust that God's going to do what God's going to do. And I should come on here and I should tell you all that when I come on here and I say I'm worried about certain things, I believe it. I believe it. I do it in a goofy way because, you know what, there's so many people out there that lie and, and cheat and steal and they make up stories and they say, oh, I'm a prophet of God and all that stuff. And I just say, I'm just a witness. I wear the shirt. Hopefully you are too. Which what we're supposed to be. I ask God, teach me the truth no matter what the cost and I hope that he gives me an answer. And I sit back and I struggle. And then I find when this terrible thing happens that the whole time God's been speaking, and nobody's listening. Nobody's listening. But Joshua listened. Joshua chapter 1. After the death, death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' is aid. Moses, my servant, is dead. Okay? He's dead. Now, this is a picture of Christ, by the way. This is a picture of the rule of Christ that's coming in in the land today. Going to take over the Hittite Empire because God's going to give it into our hands. And I'm not talking about the literal place. I'm talking about the allegorical Hittites that are in the world right now running things. Because in an instant, God will swallow everybody up. That's what happens. These poor people that are suffering right now. But in the end, it's okay. That's the point. That's, that's, we're all going to physically die. But God has a purpose and God has a plan. So we need to trust God and not man. Now then, you and all these people, get ready to cross the Jordan. So get ready to cross the Jordan, everybody. 
Get ready to cross the Jordan into the land I'm about to give you to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon to the great river Euphrates. All of the Hittite country will be yours. To the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life, even though we be small, even though we feel like insignificant, even though we have no money or no power, no wealth. This is what God says. He saves, he saves the world and the earth is inherited by the meek, not the powerful and the mighty. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. So be courageous, be strong, because you will lead this people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give to them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave to you. Don't turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful whatever you do. Keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night, that you may be careful to do everything written in it. What's the law? Jesus said, love God, love others. If you do that every day, you fulfill the law. All you got to do is love and be careful to meditate on that every single day. If you do that, God is going to be with you. It's going to deliver you and it's going to give you everywhere your foot goes. Because in a moment, because what happens here, God tells Joshua, all right, it's time to possess the land. Get your stuff together. Gather up your stuff. It's time to leave. And that's the day that we're in. That's what's coming, people. So maybe people should pay attention. Maybe people should actually take a second and say, you know what? This guy's a goofball. He always says these weird things, these wacky things, but he says it in a way, ah, oh, who could take him serious? Time to take things serious. It's time to take things serious. God's giving us the land. It's time to enter in. Love. And if you want to help those because people are going through things, I don't know where to go. UNICEF is a great place. I'll put a link in the description below if you want, or just look it up. See what you can do to help. Because it's terrible to think that there are people in the world right now going through something that we're not, thank God. It's easy for us to get weighed down on what's going down online as opposed to realizing God just destroyed the Hittite castle the enemy of the Israel's people. And I don't mean that in the literal sense. I mean that it's time to wake up, people. So wake up. Do me a favor, hit the like button, comment. I don't even care what you do. Just have the best day ever. Seek God, all right? Do whatever you want. I love you. I'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. September 10th. Mars hangs closer to the earth than it has in 6,000 years. Like the light that led men from the east to a child in a manger, it could well be a sign of good things to come. Thomas James shall be his name. The world will change because of him. In the small town of Bethel, in a time not unlike our own, a child with a great purpose is born. Years later, alienated by his peers and abused, Thomas suffers a devastating loss. When it appears he has nothing left to live for in the world, this is when his true calling begins. While trying to escape the sinister powers that be, a terrifying vision haunts him. Miraculous events seem to follow the peculiar young man as he struggles to come to terms with what he was born to do. The stage is set. The time is at hand. The truth will rise and a revolution will begin. The startling revelation of who Thomas James is, truly, will change the lives of those around him and set off a chain of events long ago foretold. There is more to this novel 
than one might think. Inside these pages hides a treasure just waiting to be discovered. So if you've ever wondered if there's more to life, or why it is we suffer, then this story will not only captivate you, it may just open your eyes to a truth that could set you free. Find out what is in us all that makes us heed the calling. Thank you.